Hello and welcome to episode 29 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech, and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about companies that continue to struggle with implementing the Financial Accounting Standards Board, or FASBIS, as the new revenue recognition standard, which becomes effective this year. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips on cloud brings to your organization. Hi, Dave. Great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be on this week, Brad. This is a uh, very boring topic. I was nodding off uh, during your uh, initial intro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think uh, yeah, I think you've got a lot of patience with me on that intro. That was a bit of a mouthful, although we won't see that in the edit, which is great. So it brings us it brings us on nicely to the question, I guess. So is this or could it be the most boring article we've discussed on the show so far? What do you think? <laughs> I think it is. It's it's really one of those things that uh, I have a tendency to kind of nod off during meetings when they talk about uh, FASB standards and uh, working you know, with accountants and working with CFOs. This becomes kind of a very important topic that you have to consider as a cloud as a cloud architect. The reality is, is that we have a tendency to kind of look at the efficiency of cloud, the ability to kind of save operational dollars as really kind of the core metric that we need to leverage as we move into the cloud. However, CFOs and CPAs and folks that pay attention to accounting standards like FASB um, are really kind of paying attention to how they can recognize revenue with these certain things, whether you're a cloud provider, a consumer of cloud, or dealing with other accounting information. We're talking about all kinds of businesses here. And so ultimately, that becomes kind of a key consideration in considering the cost metrics and how value is brought into cloud. And so I learned this the hard way where I would do a cost analysis in terms of someone's ROI in moving into cloud, and I could save them, say, 40% in the ops dollars, and then there was more strategic savings in terms of agility and time to market compression, things like that. And then I would show it to the CFO, and he would say, what you're defining to me is something that's going to absolute, cost me a million dollars a quarter in uh, lost revenue because of the tax consideration, depreciation consideration, things like that. And as these laws change and the standards change, you know, so do the value of cloud computing and you kind of have to factor this in there. So it's one of the, you know, it is kind of boring stuff, you know, sitting down on the count and having to explain accounting rules to you. However, because um, we live in the fast paced world of technology and everything's go, go, go. Uh, however, ultimately, this is something that has to be factored into all cloud decisions. And, and it's just something you have to consider if you're working anywhere in the world, by the way, the ta- you have these considerations in Australia and the UK and Europe and China and all these sorts of things. The laws exist, accounting standards exist, and they have to be factored into the, value, the bottom line value that cloud's able to bring. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're right. We we do focus on well, we don't focus on the shiny objects, but we're so aware of the shiny objects and the changes that are happening that you know it really does come down to the bottom dollar of what is the return of the cloud and and how is that going to affect you know everything with regards to the organisation, which it does. So I think it's a it is although as you say a topic that a lot of people would want to nod off to and fall asleep to. I think we really do have to pay attention to it. So it's a it's a great topic to talk about identifying you know different aspects of the cost of cloud and where people are going to get that return. So let's let's move on, I think, to the real, real real juicy bit, Dave, and find out what are your top three tips regarding this topic for this week. Yeah, number one, no, despite its boring nature, accounting is important, and you really have to consider the accounting systems and work with a CPA and work with a tax attorney to ensure that what you're provo- pr- proposing as cost savings is actually not net cost savings. In other words, it's going to go directly to the bottom line of the company. So you need to understand the net value that cloud computing brings. I can't stress that that enough, and that has to be part of the cost metrics. And so what I'll typically do when I'm presenting this to a board of directors or a CIO is I'll say, well, listen, look, this is your operational savings that I'm able to do, and here's your one, year two, year three, year four, year five, and here's your net savings. In other words, how we consider it in terms of the accounting regulations, the real value that cloud's able to bring, you know, based on adjusted for the accounting issues that we have to think about, tax depreciation, ways in which we can recognize the revenue, if they're a cloud provider, for instance, and all those things need to be calculated as well. And it's always kind of a, uh, it's always kind of a uh, aha moment, you know, when they see that. They have to understand that uh, it, it, it doesn't matter how hard or efficient your people work, 
it really matters in terms of how you get able to recognize the revenue. And if you're a publicly traded company, that's everything because that goes to earnings per share EPS, which goes to your own personal wealth, as well as the return to shareholder equity, which is the reason that uh, corporations exist. And then finally, you may need to adjust the cloud usage for, you know, for accounting. And so even when you're doing your accounting metrics that are ongoing, your ability to do cost governance, things like that, monitoring management, usage-based accounting to actually monitor in real time who's using what and for what purpose and therefore what efficiency you're saving, things like that. You have to look even at those costs at an operational level in terms of how it's adjusted for accounting. And uh, so everybody is dealing with the same metrics. And so they're not doing something that they think is efficient or moving into efficiency which is actually going to hurt the bottom line. And so there's a lot of odd things out there. When you get the accountants and the lawyers involved, it always kind of uh, moves things in really odd, kind of odd directions. But the reality is we live in a world with laws, accounting is a reality, things like that. It's just one of the things, many things we have to consider as we move, you know, move into cloud. And certainly the C-levels have to consider that as well. Great three tips there, Dave. And I'm hoping that that kept everyone awake. Uh, for the rest of this video, so uh, it was uh, it's certainly uh, certainly a topic that I think if you get wrong and you're not aware of the return and and how it's going to you know affect the business financially, it's certainly something that will keep you awake at night. Although the topic may put people to sleep, it's certainly something that I think people will be very fearful of. So it's it's great that we've covered this one off, Dave. Thanks for that. Thanks for being part of the C Suite Show this week. It's always a pleasure, man. Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed and stayed awake during this show. And remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. And also, you can find David on Twitter, which is at David Lindicum. I'm also on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. And yeah, look forward to next week. And we've got some great things coming up, some great special guests. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.